hopefully this time it's not like before where I just pretended like I'm back but I, but I suddenly disappeared again after uploading one video I'm like gone I wanted to share a little bit of my story on how I went from being an art student and super focused on it in high school and then after high school I sort of just like had like a big break no touching of any paintbrushes at all or and just focused on I don't know <laughs> I don't know but hopefully as we go through the video you'll understand how my process is kind of like Oh, also I forgot to mention, they with me here please and just help me out if you can please subscribe and please keep watching and hit the thumbs up. Oh my god, you get what I mean. Help me out here guys. <laughs> okay, thank you. So to begin my painting process, the first thing that I do is I try to freehand sketch the idea that I have in mind and this is just to help me see what the subjects are going to be like in the canvas. And you don't want it to be perfect as well as this is just the beginning of the process. Otherwise you're going to be stuck and get bored and not continue to finish the painting. And you don't have to worry about the sketch being perfect because you're also just gonna layer that with paint anyway so you're not gonna see it as much and it's not gonna ma matter much as long as you have like an idea where subjects are going to go then that's good enough and then the next step that I do I paint the first layer of colors that matches the colors that I have in my head like for example here and that's it's the sky i just like sort of just roughly paint the colors onto the canvas nothing really serious about like color theory or like not really paying attention to per perfecting the brush strokes again this is just like the same as sketching it's just to give me an idea and not what the colors are going to look like on the canvas as well and it helps me create a vision in my head on what it's gonna look like. So when I started feeling like I was done with art, it all happened back in my final year of high school, year 13. Uh, there was a lot of pressure. I had this idea that everything had to be perfect. School, life, and yes, my art as well. And I started falling behind. And as much as I loved painting, it just became something else that I had to do, not something I enjoyed. And in fact, I hated how deadlines controlled the process. It just made it less enjoyable because like you start stressing out and having that deadline pressure on your back when you want to enjoy the process was not something that motivated me it made me push the time that i should be painting much further so in result i even got more behind on my pieces because some days i'd start a piece and not even finish it because i just couldn't feel inspired it's like the joy had been drained from it you know the joy from from the process of painting has been drained because your why's now on why you want to paint is because for grades and for the validation from others and it's not because you love what you're doing you have a passion for it and you want to keep creating it wasn't like that anymore so time went on i still kept painting but this time mindlessly, just for the sake of grades. But eventually, I burnt out. And I felt like an imposter when people complimented my work, like I didn't deserve it. And the burnt out stayed with me for years. Um, like, here in YouTube, you'd, you'd see my previous videos. I still painted for quite a bit. But after every piece, after every artwork that I finished, I would stop there and would be gone again and never do anything art related or 
painting or drawing behind the scenes. It was more just so for the camera and I wasn't really connecting with it much anymore. It was more like a time where I wanted to explore what kind of art style did work for me and of course as you can see it didn't really work um, I had a lot of issues with different art styles and and when I find myself not really enjoying that type of art style I give myself a break and kind of like pity myself for it <laughs> because I can't find my original style but looking back Especially in my high school, in my early high school years, one of my teachers taught me. Um, one of my teachers introduced me to Van Gogh art, uh, to Van Gogh's paintings, and I really liked how you can see the brushstrokes that were left on the canvas. He didn't try to cover it up, but if you see it from afar, you can't really notice those brushstrokes, but you see a, a very nice finished painting and you see those bright colors that's been painted on the canvas ask yourself why am i doing this because if it's not for you then what's the point art should be personal and i lost sight of that so here i am today painting again but on my own terms and as as we continue throughout this video i hope this inspires anyone out there who might be struggling with their art or anything else. You should take your time, do it for you, and also don't be afraid to step away if you need to. Because art will always be there when you're ready. So I hope you enjoyed this little talk that I, <laughs> that I have, a little sorry that I have for you guys. And I'll go through the process again. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. So after I've sketched my subjects and put on the first layers of paint, I start by outlining them again, but this time using paint. Now here's a trick that works for me. So use the darkest color you can see on your reference or on the subject you're painting to outline. Because the darkest colors act as a foundation. It's easier to just add highlights later than it is to keep layering over lighter colors trying to make them darker and trust me it saves you a lot of time in the long run plus using dark tones first creates a sense of depth right from the beginning like your painting will feel more grounded and you can slowly build up the lighter shades and highlights as you progress you won't have to fight with too many layers which keeps the texture nice and clean as well. Of course, like the process might not work for everyone because it really depends on your art style. And that's the beautiful thing about art. There are no hard rules. You'll find different artists who prefer to start with lighter colors and build the shadows later. And others might not outline at all and then just jump straight into blending. Your style will definitely come with practice and experimenting and finding what feels natural to you. Even though I'm a self-taught artist, I've picked up certain fundamentals that have shaped my process and especially um, taking art subjects in high school has really helped me develop my painting skills. And you'll notice that as you keep painting because you'll start learning these things naturally even without formal training and it's all just about repetition and trusting yourself and just keep practicing because when you're self-taught there's a lot you end up learning on your own and you might not even realize it at first one day you're just sitting there painting and you notice how you've improved that blending colors or how your brush strokes feel more confident and that's the magic of practice. You don't always need like a formal teacher. Sometimes your own trial and error are the best guides. So for example, I used to spend ages layering paint because I'd start with the lightest colors first and try to build the dark tones afterward. 
but I quickly realized that if I just flip the process and start with the darkest colors, I could cut down on the time and effort, plus the results felt much smoother. Every artist literally has those like light bulb moments. And also remember it's okay to make mistakes because every painting is an experiment in itself. So as I continue working on this piece, I hope like these insights into my outlining process and layering techniques would help you in some way. But also remember that what I'm sharing is just one way of doing things. Because your artistic journey will look different from mine. And, and that's good. Because as you grow as an artist, you'll develop your own shortcut tricks and methods that work specifically for you. There's really something special about the process of painting. It's not just about making something look pretty or getting the colors just right. It's about everything that happens while you're creating. Sometimes it feels like a conversation between you and the canvas, like the two of you are figuring things out together. And it's funny how the more you paint, the more you realize that the emotion you go through during the process are what really makes it worthwhile. Because every time I sit down to paint, I feel a bit of a mix. Sometimes I would get that urge to paint because I feel a certain emotion, like when I'm sad or when I'm hurting or when I'm super happy or when I'm super happy. So there's always like that sense of excitement but also some uncertainty and I think that's what makes it so interesting because you never really know how it's going to turn out so even if you have like a solid plan or a clear reference in the beginning when I'm just sketching things out it feels kind of light and carefree there's no pressure at all just the freedom to get the basic shapes down it's like okay this is where everything starts but I'm not committed to anything yet then comes the first layer of paint and that's when things start to feel real laying down the base colors is like the foundation but even at that stage there's a part of me that gets a little nervous you know <laughs> and i'm like is this color too light is it too dark am i getting it right but honestly the key is to just trust the process and that's something i've had to remind myself over and over again and trust me, every single artist has felt this way. And just trusting the process, that's the, the, the biggest factor. And it's so easy to get caught up in trying to make things perfect from the start. I used to struggle with that a lot. And especially when I first started painting, I wanted everything to look exactly like the reference I was working with. Like I would focus on perfecting each and every single line and get frustrated when it didn't match perfectly but eventually i realized that the beauty of painting is that it's not it's not supposed to be perfect in fact it's the imperfections that make it feel more alive and as i keep adding layers i start to settle into that rhythm of painting and there's this point where everything kind of clicks and suddenly I'm fully in the zone like you know what I mean it's like the outside world just fades away and all that matters is what's happening on the canvas it's just between you and the canvas and you lose track of time and sometimes I even forget to take breaks or even eat because I'm so absorbed in what I'm doing and it's like being in a flow state where everything else just doesn't matter and when I'm in that state that's when painting feels the most fulfilling but obviously it's not always smooth sailing there are gonna be moments when i would hit a wall and it feels like nothing is going right and the colors don't blend the way i want them to or the proportions are off and i just want to step back and scrap the whole thing <laughs> and honestly that feeling can be overwhelming it's hard to stay motivated when you're starting a piece that's just not working but those frustrating moments are a part of the journey because they force you to push through and figure out new ways to approach the piece. And when you get past that hurdle, the sense of accomplishment is just so worth it. 
And I think, again, that's one of the most important lessons I've learned as an artist. Like, every painting is a journey. And so, it holds your time and the effort that you've put on. And there are ups and downs, but it's the emotional roller coaster that makes the final piece feel so meaningful as well. And it's like you've poured a little bit of yourself in that painting. And that's what makes it unique. Sure, someone else could paint the same subject as well. But no one else can put the same energy, the same emotion into it that you do. And then of course, there's that moment when you start to see the painting come together. You've gone through the rough patches and now things are just starting to look how you imagined them. And that feeling of satisfaction, like, wow, this is actually turning into something, is like one of the best parts of the whole process. It's like watching a puzzle piece click into place. It's like, it's like that sort of feeling. And I think one of the reasons why painting feels so rewarding is because it forces you to be patient. And today, where everything is like fast-paced and taking the time to sit down and really work on something, slowly building it up layer by layer is almost a form of like meditation. You can't rush a painting because you have to let it develop on its own terms. And I think that's where a lot of joy comes from, like learning to slow down and just appreciate the journey rather than focusing on the end result. And because if you focus on the end result, you start to hurry things up and just and frustration just starts from there as well. And also there's just something personal about painting. Like even if you're working with a reference or recreating something that already exists, you put your own spin on it. Like the way you mix colors, the brush strokes you use, even the little mistakes you make, all of that is uniquely yours. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And it's like you're leaving a little piece of yourself on the canvas. So that's why sometimes when I'm painting, I'll think about how different it is from other forms of art and like writing or music like which unfold ev over time a painting is something you experience all at once but what it's but what's interesting is that while a viewer might see the final piece in one glance they don't see all the hours that went into creating it like they don't see the layers that have been painted over or the adjustments that were covered up along the way it's like, it's like the painting has its own hidden history and only the artist or you or us know the full story behind it. And speaking of the layers, like that's something that always fascinates me too. Like with every new layer, the painting becomes richer, more detailed, and more alive. And sometimes I look at an area that I've worked on for hours and think, this was just a blank canvas not too long ago. And it's kind of amazing to think about how something so complex can come from something so simple. And one of my favorite parts of the process is adding the highlights, as it's one of the last steps that I do, and it just brings everything to life. Like suddenly the subject starts to pop off the canvas and the painting slowly is starting to feel complete. And it's a satisfying feeling because almost like a reward for all the time and effort you put into it. But even after the painting is done, I always have like mixed emotions. <laughs> like because there's a part of me that feels accomplished like, yes, I finished it. But there's also a part that feels a little sad like, oh, it's finally, it's over. Like it's almost like ending a good conversation with a friend you're glad you had it but you kind of wish it could just keep going. And that's why even when a painting is complete, I often find myself thinking about the next one. It's this constant cycle of creation, reflection, and then moving on to the next project. And at the end of the day, painting is more than just putting colors on the canvas. It's an emotional experience, really. Like it's a way of expressing yourself, a way of working through your thoughts and feelings. And yeah, it's hard sometimes. It can be frustrating and there are definitely moments when you want to give up. 
but those challenges are what make the final result so rewarding. Like every stroke, every layer, every mistake you make along the way adds to the story of the piece. So yeah, painting isn't always easy, but it's the process, the emotions, the ups and downs, the quiet moments of focus that make it so worth it. And in the end, like when you step back and look at what you've created, you realize that like all the effort, all the frustration, all the joy is right there on the canvas, captured in every brushstroke. Like, that's what makes painting worthwhile and it's not just about the finished piece it's everything that happens along the way and honestly i wouldn't trade that feeling for anything and yeah it is a biggest fascination for me how art works like magic in a way in our lives you know in, in every single person's life that does art I like I hope you do realize and see that process and, and how beautiful that process is and I hope you enjoyed the last few minutes of this video without me constantly yapping
Thank you.